Good morning and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church. We're so happy that you joined us today for worship. It's July 4th and we'll be using the propers for Independence Day. It is recognized by the Episcopal Church as a feast and we intend to celebrate it. This is a feast of all that is best about the intentions of our country. And we celebrate all of that, especially in wake of the difficult experiences that we've all had in this country over the last year. May God continue to bless our country and may God's spirit continue to guide us and our leaders as we negotiate this difficult time. If you'd like to follow along in today's booklet, you can go to our website at ChristChurchPOK.org. There you'll be able to download a booklet and follow along with all the prayers and songs this morning. Or if you'd rather, you can sit back, relax, listen to the wonderful prayers and the beautiful patriotic music today. And know that God has truly blessed you and God has blessed us this morning with your presence. Blessed be our God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness, and they shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. A reading from the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I wish it was not controversial in the Episcopal Church this year to celebrate Independence Day. I have read posts by my colleagues all week about how Jesus was not an American and how religion should not be conflated with nationalism. I want you to know that I agree with all those things. I imagine that you do too. But this year, when I saw the Capitol overrun by domestic terrorists on January 6th, I felt a sadness well up in me that was very deep and a sense of protection and love for my country. I am an American, and I am proud to live in a country where we have ideals like freedom and equality and justice, even if we don't always live up to those ideals. Perhaps it is because I am a Christian that I understand believing in things and falling short from time to time. I do not always get it right, but I do try. And I try to learn from my mistakes. And I want my country to learn from its mistakes too. Our country is polarized right now in a way that I have never seen it before. Conservatives tend to idealize the past, but when they do, they ignore the systemic enslavement of Africans, the subjection of women over the centuries, and the mistreatment of Native Americans, just to name a few. But liberals also construct a past in which those significant failures overshadow the motives and the dreams and the imagination that our founders aspired to. It also ignores the fact that the founding fathers of this country actually created structures that were durable enough to be improved and withstand years and years of revision and learning and perfection. It doesn't seem right either to let all the good work that was done in the founding of our country disappear because it wasn't perfect. I wonder if we couldn't all agree that the founding fathers created a wonderful country a beautiful experiment that was then and remains in constant need of improvement. This tendency to reject people and ideas completely instead of being comfortable with the reality that most people and ideas and countries are not completely good or completely bad seems to me arrogant in the extreme, because it posits the idea that we could have done it better. 
Today's gospel reading has something to say about this black and white thinking. Jesus tells us in today's gospel, you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Melina and Rohrbaugh, in their commentary on the Synoptic Gospels, reminds us that at the time of Jesus, love and hate were not understood in terms of internal emotional states, feelings, or attitudes. Jesus is not asking us to feel love toward our enemies. They write, Persons at the time of Jesus had little concern for things psychological. Words referring to an, an internal state always connote a corresponding external expression as well. For example, to covet always involved the attempt to take what one desired. Hence, the word is best translated to steal. And so to love our enemies does not mean to try and feel affection for them. It means to be attached to them, to be devoted to them, to be loyal to them, to understand yourself to be bound to your enemies as if they are part of your own household, part of your own family, and to behave outwardly in ways that correspond with that inner attachment. Jesus points out that God treats God's enemies, the evil and the unrighteous, the same way that God treats God's friends, the good and the righteous. He sends rain on the good and the bad. He sends sunshine to the evil and to the righteous. And we ought to do the same because we are children of God's kingdom. And that means that we have an extra responsibility to try and behave in this world as God would have us do. And that means loving our enemies with just the same affection and intention and outward actions as we love our friends. We owe compassion and kindness to people who agree with us and people who don't. We should be respectful and kind to people who support the causes and ideas that we believe and those who don't. Or, as someone once said, there is no path to love because love is the path. And on this day, on July 4th, the date of the Declaration of Independence, the first time the colonies collectively said, we understand ourselves to be a people. On this day, maybe we can start with those who we disagree with the most vehemently in our own country. I want to tell you about my friend Noto. Noto is the part-time sexton for this church. Noto also mows the lawn. Noto has worked for Christ Church for many years, and he also works for St. Paul's Episcopal Church, our sister church across town. 
Noto came to this country from Liberia with his brother. They were fleeing persecution. Noto and his wife, Ruthie, are both immigrants, both from Liberia. They both have worked very hard. They were able to buy a small home in Hyde Park. They have one child, a daughter, who graduated from FDR this year and is going to SUNY Albany in the fall. Noto works many jobs. He always comes to work with a smile on his face. He is always the most positive member of, I think, a generally positive and loving staff. And every year at the staff retreat, we are all humbled by the depth of Noto's faith. He is usually the one who quotes a psalm or reads a passage of scripture that reminds us all of the importance of the work that we do in the church. Two years ago, Noto became a citizen of the United States. A group of us from church went down to the Bardavon Theater on Main Street to see him stand among a group of 40 or so men and women from across the world who had come here seeking a better life. They raised their hands and pledged to preserve, protect, and defend this country. And when they raised the flag, and played the national anthem, I cried. Our country is not perfect. It has never been perfect. But our country is good enough, good enough to have offered people from across the globe a better way of life, a safer way of life, a life filled with opportunity and blessings. And our country is good enough to have recognized over the years when it has made mistakes and needed to change course. Our country is something to be proud of. But more than that, our country has always required the effort and humility of all of us, recognizing that we have been given a special gift, a special opportunity to participate in the American experiment, but that requires all of us doing our part. And it is our day, our time. And in this moment, Jesus' words remind us that, that we have an obligation to love our enemies as well as our friends because we are all united in this one experiment. We have an obligation to put our shoulder to the plow and do the hard work of reclaiming the sacred promise of America, remembering that God is our guide and God always has a knowledge and an understanding and an expansiveness of vision that none of us can see completely. But we must try. And those efforts begin right here at home learning to love each other, to care for each other, and to remember the promise that we have been given. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Jim, Martha, Betty and Peter, Derek, Anita, Kate, Alan, David, Joanne, Griff, Caroline, Phoebe, Caitlin, Don, Kay, John, Janet, Bill, Gregory and Joyce, Mary, Diane, Bob, Betty and Daniel, Catherine, Tim, Kathleen, Claire, Danny, Beth, Thomas Jr., Jackie, Paul, Ann, and the people in Miami and Surfside. And for the rescue workers, give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the gift of living in America. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of turbulence, there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace, there may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the spirit of Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. May God's peace truly be with you and your household on this July 4th. If you'd like to make a donation to support the ongoing work of Christ Episcopal Church, you can do that in one of several ways. You can make a safe, secure online donation at tithely.com. You can also text the word GIVE to the number below. Or, if you'd prefer, you can send a check to our physical location at 20 Carroll Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. We're so grateful for your support, and we thank you for your ongoing contributions. May God bless you. Today, we honor and celebrate a great pioneer of the church. Bishop Carolyn Irish was only the fourth woman elected bishop in the United States of America, and she served as the 10th bishop of Utah. Bishop Irish passed away on Tuesday of this week, and we feel especially connected to her as her daughter, Jessica, and her granddaughter, Vivian, are faithful members of Christ Episcopal Church. So please join me in offering our prayers for Bishop Irish and her valiant and prophetic witness in the national church and especially in her beloved state of Utah. 
And also, our sympathies go out to Jessica, Vivian, and their family as they grieve during this difficult time. May God bless you. be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Carolyn and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break, Alleluia, is the communion. Almighty and ever-living God, 
We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ be our new beginning, the hope and salvation of the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.